BBL's Gunners Collective TV. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack at it. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. In the Menudo Stein in direct fashion, we're going to get straight into the content of the day. But before we do, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Ding. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directing the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel and it's all because of you. And for that, I can say I'm very humbled and I'm very much so appreciative. So, gracias. So, I wanted to tell you about the youngest homie in the hood, man, that was smacking shit, right? Now, do you guys watch the ID channel? I know if you don't, your old lady does. You can't tell me that you ain't never walked in the pad, because I've done it before. And your old lady's sitting there on the couch, mesmerized, watching the ID channel, how to smack her fucking old man, right? You walk in the pad, you just worked all day, and you see your old lady right there sitting, fucking eating whatever she's eating, all fat and shit, watching the ID channel, and you do like I do. You turn right around and you walk the fuck back out and call the side piece. And I'm going to tell you why, and she's watching the ID channel too. It's like a phenomenon. This is what happens, right? Well, when these types of channels first came out, you know, How to Kill Your Old Man, the How to Kill Your Old Man channel, that's what I call it, right? Um, I had a little homie, and he was a very young homie. And I remember I used to always try to persuade him to get out the life. Like he was still that young. And I, I remember joining the gang that young. So to me, it was like, I can't even, I can't even phantom seeing kids do that nowadays. But thinking it was all right for me to get involved at a very young age, at nine, 10 years old in the gang, right? So when I would see him, when I would pull up, and this was my homeboy's younger brother, right? Now my homeboy is doing life. He's been doing life for a long time. He's locked up. They won't let him out, right? All these laws that passed, everything that happened, nothing changed. So every time I would go to this youngster's pad, you know, and it was like Kane. I was like Kane from Menace to Society. I would go over there, try to help his mom out with a little bit of money because I felt bad. And I grew up spending the night at her house. So I knew what it was. She would always be sitting down watching the ID channel or it wasn't even the ID channel, but it was something similar, right? Now I reflect back. Um, I think it was like she would always watch America's Most Wanted and Unsolved Mysteries and things like that. She was always trying to figure out how to get rid of a motherfucker, right? <laughs> Straight up. And I never realized it. I thought, ah, she was just into that shit. I know women are into that type of stuff. Um, and, then what, and that's what it was. So I remember I used to go over there. I'd see the young homie. He'd come in all flamed up, trying to grow a Mongolian, gang banged out. And I would get at him because I felt that me being in that lifestyle and living... It was my obligation, just like it was my obligation when I would get out of prison to hook up the homies, send them money, um, function on the streets, do what I was doing. On the other hand, it was like two-faced, right? It was also my obligation to try to help the Ras out. And I felt I was doing a good deed by telling this youngster, not lacing him up and putting him up on game and telling him everything all these drama queens want me to tell him, but telling him, hey, bro, fucking there's other ways, other things you could be doing, you know? So I would take them with me, um, you know, take them camping, take them fishing all the time. Try to get them up out the barrio. But you could take someone out the hood, but you can't take the hood out them, right? So no matter what I try to do, and I would take a man, hey, bro, you hungry? Let's go eat at Foster Freeze, or let's go fucking to Modesto and go cruising, or let's go, um, I'm going to take you to my familia's house in the, in the Bay Area, man. So you could experience different things, the Monterey Bay Aquarium and I was just trying to help the young homie out. I was trying to help him experience things, experience things he couldn't because his mom was the type where she had revolving boyfriends, always different vatos at the pad. Um, but she had this one particular dude for a while, man. And the mom looked battered and bruised. She looked broken down like she had just given up. And like I said, all she did was sit on the couch and watch this channel. So I did the most I could because her oldest son, which was my homie, was locked up. So I was looking out for his little brother. So all I could do. But I couldn't stop what was the inevitable, what was coming. And it came even worse than I expected, right? So one day I go over there and this youngster's heated. He's mad. He's pacing, right? I'm like, what's up, bro? Where's your head for? And his mom's locked in the room. He's like, I don't know, bro. She won't come out of the room. She's been in there all night. You know, I'm trying to hit her up, but it is what it is. So I knock on the door. Hey, are you good? And she's like, yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm just, I, I got shit to do. I got to go to work or whatever. I'm getting ready. So I said, hey, man, your mom's getting ready for work. It's cool. And he's like, nah, bro, something happened. Her and her dude were arguing last night and the bottle jammed and she hasn't come out of the room yet. I think he put hands on her. So 
let me explain something to you. When you live in a situation like that, where you're arguing all the time, um, the truth will come out. Oh, yes, it will. And people will find out about it because kids talk, people talk. You know, they let you know what's going on. Sometimes you never know what your neighbor's doing. You never know what's going on in a household, right? And me having going, been the one to go over there frequently, and a lot of other homies did too. Um, we started getting hit to the skit. We started getting up on game of what exact, what actually was going on in that pad, right? Um, the mother was in a bad situation she couldn't find herself out of, right? You know, the one fucking dude's beating on her and shit, and then she'll run back. But I love him. I love him, right? Th that type of relationship. But her son was on some different shit. He was on devil time. See, these youngsters nowadays, even prior, the era before, you don't know what you have in the house. You don't know the seed that's growing, the bad seed, right? This was the problem child. This kid was, I mean, his brother was his idol, was his fucking hero. And his brother was doing life for smacking two people. So imagine what was going through this kid's mind. His whole thing was, I'm trying to achieve one more than you. Different type of level of stuff. And even though I was trying to help him and change him, I was talking to a brick wall. There was nothing I could do. So I remember that day I went over there and, and like I said, she wouldn't come out of the room. She was getting ready. She was getting ready for a long ass time because I was there for like an hour. So I knew the situation. I knew the domestic shit. So I said, hey, bro, let's, let's jam. You know, let me let me get you up out of here. And I did that for two reasons. One, so he didn't have to see what was going on with his mom. And two, because it was none of his fucking business what adults do. Really, to be honest with you, right? Um, and I didn't want to have to see his mom and then have to fucking do something to the boyfriend. So we jam. Boyfriend's gone. We jam. And I remember, man, I took him to San Jose. And we went to a homie's house in San Jose. And it wasn't a gang member's house. It was just a friend's, friend of mine's. And we went over there and they were having a fucking thing for his daughter, like a little party. It was a birthday party or something. And we chilled over there. And uh, I remember they were like, why are you bringing these fucking youngsters to my pad? What are you doing hanging around with youngsters, weirdo? And I said, that's the little homie and shit, man. He's cool. I said, we're not on no gang banging time. I mean, even though he was flamed up and all super gang banged out, it wasn't that time, you know? And I explained to the homie, I'm just trying to get him away from his pad, bro. It's, it's bad. It's, it's a bad situation over there. Well... What had happened was the mom had argued with the boyfriend and he put a gang of hands on her, right? And uh, he took her way out in the country and made her ass walk all the way home. See, that's how them type of fucking gay ass individuals get down. And when I say gay, I don't mean gay like as in homosexual. I mean gay as in weird, right? Just a weirdo, right? And um, this dude took his fucking old lady way out in the country, put hands on her, and let her walk all the way back home like she was a damn dog, right? Unfortunate, man. People find out about these types of things, right? So, when we hear the story what happened, the little homie goes in kill zone, kill mode. And doesn't take it out necessarily on his mom's boyfriend yet. But takes it out on a lot of other people, right? So, I remember fucking, hey, I, was, I went to his pad looking for him. His mom's all beat up. I'm like, what happened? She was like... Uh, it's just, it's my business. No big deal. Fucking the, the unsolved mysteries is playing in the background. Missing man goes, well, I'm like, oh shit. Right. And I'm like, Hey, and I, I went to see the little homie. He was gone. She was like, he's been gone for like a week. I can't find him. I said, well, you call the cops and, and you're trying to fucking figure it out. And she was like, I didn't report him because he does this all the time. And it's hood shit. You know, back then in the day, we wouldn't go home for three, four days. It just was what it was. So I said, I'm going to look for him. If I see him, you know what I mean? I'll snatch him up and bring him home. You know, and, and, and it is. Are you good, though? She's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. She wasn't good. And I'm going to tell you how good she wasn't. So anyways, I'm looking around, looking around, man. And I'm telling the homies, hey, you see the little homie and shit? They're like, hey, bro, he's out here doing some dirt. Bro, you got to catch him. You know, we're all trying to catch him before the, the cops do. They're already looking for his ass. This motherfucker's out here doing some shit. So like a week passed and I'm looking for him. Can't find him. So I get a call from a fucking like a probation officer. I don't know why they called me, old ex-convict me. At that time, I was an active gang membership, but they called me. And they're like, hey, we need you to pick this guy. We can't get a hold of his mom. He just got released out of juvenile hall. Um, you're the only one's number he had. Can you come pick him up? Hell yeah, I'll go pick him up. You know, that's what you do for your little homies. It's not about taking them, shooting them people up and gang banging. Sometimes you have to be there. If they don't have a father figure, their mom's going through some shit, um, and their brother's your homie in real life, then you go fucking do that. You step up to the plate. It's real life, right? So I went, picked him up. I'm all scared and shit in the probation office. Fucking, I ain't been there fucking for a minute, right? So I'm looking in 
And they're like, oh, yeah, you, right? You, motherfucker, right? And I'm like, what's up? So I go pick him up. I dressed regular because I didn't want to give him that image of a gang member. It just looks bad, right? So I'm like, what's up with you? And he was like, man, I'm fucking, my mom got beat up again. And man, I'm getting tired of this. And uh, I'm about to do some bad stuff to her boyfriend. I said, yeah, well, you know, don't, don't jump the gun, bro. You know, that's your mom's relationship. If you see it in real life, give me a call. Call some other homeboys. We'll pull up, right? We'll pull up and whatever happens, happens, bro. But I don't want to see you get caught up behind fucking your mom's business. You know, if she's not trying to tell you your business, and he goes, yeah, but I see her all beat up all the time. I hear him yelling at night and it just ain't cool. And I say, come stay with me for a minute, bro. You're good. So I tell my old lady, hey, no, he's going to stay in the other room and shit. So he's there for like three or four days and he wants to go home because all his clothes and all his shit's at his pad, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. So I drop him off. Worst mistake ever, right? So, this is what happens. So, the little homie and his mom, I guess his mom's enough's enough. And she talks to her son. And she already knows her son carries guns. Her son's in the mix in the gang like that. I mean, he was in a no-win situation. A single mother, brother locked up, dad being dead or gone, doesn't even know where he's at. Some paisa fucking in a rancho out there in the, the outskirts of Fresno, right? And just... I think whatever his mom was going through was eating him inside and her too. So when this guy gets home, all drunk from the bar, right? And he was a paisa dude. When he got home drunk for the bar, you know, he sees the kid. He sees, and then this was all a setup. They had already pre-planned it. And uh, he sees the kid, the little homie. And the little homie hits him up like, hey, bro, what's up? What's wrong with you? Why are you coming late all the time and shit? My mom doesn't appreciate that. She's at work. Really, she didn't go to work that day. Really, she was waiting, Right. And uh, the dude's like, yeah, 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 whatever. I'm going to sleep. I'm fucking faded, right? And so when he turns to fucking go, he sees his old lady come out of the bathroom. And then he looks at the little homie, I guess, like, hey, what the fuck? Why are you lying to me, right? And when he turns to the little homie, the mom smacks him. Bop! He falls out. Little homie pulls something out. Bop, bop, bop. Okay, they cut this dude up. You know, uh, did whatever they did. And that was that for a while. See, this Paisa dude, no one was going to report him. He was illegal, right? He came over, no papers, no nothing. But he had a couple of homeboys from where I guess where he worked. They kept coming by the pad. Hey, you seen the homeboy? You seen the homie? And they had buried this motherfucker, right? In their, not buried him outside, but like in their pad under like the floorboards. True story, right? So this motherfuckers would come by and look. They were the only ones looking, but it wasn't like cops were looking, nothing like that, right? Well, whatever happened there set the little homie off. Like, and it happens to people. I've seen it happen in prison. I've seen it happen several times over. Once they pull that trigger once, they don't want to stop pulling it. This little youngster became a demon, man. He went on some different shit. You know, he felt, yes, now he felt obligated to the streets in a different type of way. Now he wanted to raise his hand on everything. And I remember, man, he came like, I guess it was like two days after that. Happy as fuck. And I hadn't seen him smile in a long time. I'm like, what's up, little homie? Right? I was chilling with the homeboys in front of the pad. And he's like, oh, no, it's good, man. It's good. He's like, hey, that dude left my mom. He ain't coming back. And by the way he said it, I was like, oh, cool. Didn't catch it the first time. Then he kept on saying it like he wanted to tell someone. And usually when someone does and this is the problem in society. When motherfuckers do dirt, they can't hold it in. See, there are those that will fucking do dirt and that's that. Mm -mm. They'll never speak on it ever in their life, right? And then there are those that just want to, they have to tell someone. You know what I mean? They'd be sitting there like, boom, and it blows up, and they just tell everyone, this one, bro, I killed someone yesterday. Is that real? Right? So, let me explain to you. So, this guy gets on demon time. The homies are going to go smack some shit. They want to go cruising around. Some of the homeboys, we had different pockets of homies. Like, we were a little bit older, so we kicked it over here. We had younger homies that would go out there and get their ride on with the Southsiders and Atwater. We had homeboys that would go chill with the homies in Levi's. And we had homeboys that were in the Bay Area partying. Just different crews of homeboys, different circles, right? But we were all one water. And he started to hang, he used to hang around with us, the older homies, because he just felt, I guess, like a sense of like protection because we were his brother's homies. But then he started hanging around with a different crew. These were the ones that were out there smacking shit, man. And we started to hear things about him like, hey, bro, this fool fucking is letting off. He's different, right? And I remember I, I, I pulled up to his mom's pad. And I was like, man, I got to get at his mom. Like, hey. And I told her, hey, you ever thought about moving or, or doing something like changing it up, like helping him out? 
And I could tell that looking at her, she was very like distraught. She was watching her fucking channel. She was quiet. Usually she was held up, hey, mijo, what's up? You want something to eat? This, this, and that. She was cool like that, you know? Unless she was getting beat on, then it was a, a different rhythm. But she was just like real silent, real quiet. So I started to piece shit together like, oh, okay. Okay, dude's not around no more. Son's on demon time. Mom's on ID channel time. D -d 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 -d. Stinks around this motherfucker, right? Something's going on here. And uh, it was what it was. So years later, right? Trip out on this. Years later. Whatever happens, happens. Okay? We'll just say that. Years later, or I won't even say years later. It's probably like a year later, right? Um, there's a shooting that happens in Atwater. Okay? North and south. And they're looking for northerners. So they're coming through the water, cruising around, questioning people. You've seen this. And they have their list of suspects or whatever. And the little homie's picture is there. And I ain't seen him. His mom had moved up out the hood. I ain't seen him for a while. I forgot all, like, not forgot all about him, but it just was what it was. You know, you're, I was locked up. I was doing my shit. You know, I ain't got time to play fucking uh, step uncle, especially if I ain't getting a mom on. So I'm just doing my own thing. Yeah, it's just real talk, man. You know, if the mom ain't hooking me up, with the mamon, then I'm not going to play the stepdaddy, right? So I'm over here fucking cruising around and I'm at the homie's house and the cops come through like, hey, you see these guys are looking for three guys. One of them's a little homie. And I, I see him. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, nah, hell nah. What the fuck you asking us for, right? We ain't seen no one. He was like, hey, well, if we catch these guys, they're going to get stretched out. So if you catch them before we do, let them know, turn themselves in. You know, the same old bullshit. Well, the little homie's primo, him and his primo are out in Monterey right? And uh, for those of you that don't know, it's it's Monterey County by Salinas and all that. They're out in Monterey. And I took them to the Monterey Bay Aquarium and all that before. But they're out there and he's hiding out, you know, because he's wanted on this attempted murder charges. They had shot some dudes in that water, I guess, right? And his primo gets pulled over or something and caught with dope. And of course, what happens? Uh -huh, you guessed it. He tells on him. He tells on him, right? Like, hey, fool, fucking, you know, Hey, this fool's out there. This is where he's hiding at. Whatever. He's at my tia's house or whatever. So they raid and they snatch him up. They bring him back to Merced. Now, he's still young. He's still youth authority type shit, right? And what every detective does his work, the fucker does his job right. So he has him in there and this kid's fucking, he's going through it now because he's wanted on like three attempted murders. Um, he's suspected of like fucking two, two murders, like just a gang of shit. I remember I was like, damn. The little homie stretched out. And look, they wouldn't let us, you know, it wasn't like I can go visit him or anything like that. You know, I had to be family on the list and shit. So I remember going to his Hefa's house. And again, she's all fucking quiet, right? Now she lives in a different pad. She moved to Modesto. And we it was hard for me and the homies to find her pad, but we found her, right? And so I'm like, hey, your fucking son, you know, what, what's going on? And she was like, what do you guys expect me to do to help him? We're like, fucking, oh uh, no, at least be there for him. You know what I mean? He's on some crazy shit, like, the little homie's done. He's washed up. And this was about the time when they started charging more kids as adults. See, back in my days, they would charge you as a minor. You got lucky. But this was about the time they were starting to, like, do more of charging them as adults. They were just like, fuck it. We're going to throw away, lock them up, throw away the key on their ass, right? So I remember she uh, she was like, yeah, I'm going to go see him. I'm going to go see him. And the homeboy goes to pick her up because she didn't have a ride to take her to go see him. And the homie comes to the pad hella quick. I remember he was like, hey, fool, I got to get at you. I got to get at you. Calm down, fool. Can't you see I'm over here trying to get on my mom for my badass tirada? Relax, right? He's like, nah, bro, fuck that fat bitch. Look, it's serious, right? I'm like, what's up? He's like, bro, the mom turned herself in. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, bro. He's like, hey, she was supposed to help the little homie out. She washed him up. I said, what happened? He goes, remember that boyfriend that used to beat on her a long time ago? And I didn't remember at first. Then I was like, oh, yeah, the paisa dude. She was like, fool. He was like, fool. They smacked him. I was like, no way, right? He's like, yeah, they did that shit, bro, right? And I was like, what? Hey, they found the body and everything was buried in the house, right? I was like, what? Yeah, she confessed to everything. Um, she thought by doing that and admitting that she like put her son in that situation, he would get out. Bitch, all you did was fucking stack more charges on him, right? So his brother calls me one day. He's locked up. He's like, hey, bro, you hear about my mom and my brother and everything? He's like, damn, bro, I feel bad because I wasn't there. So now he goes on demon time in prison. And he ends up getting removed because he's J-catting out on the yard. He's tripping out. His mom's gone. His brother's gone. He has no more family. So he fucks up. And the cause doesn't care about that. They don't care about what you're going through with your family. 
he gets removed. And he was a solid ass homeboy, right? And that's how that lifestyle goes. But the youngster end up getting charged as a minor and going to YA, right? They couldn't pin a lot of those things on him. His mom took the rap on the case, said that she did it. He just helped her bury the body or whatever, right? And um, he ended up getting out. He ended up getting out. And I remember thinking to myself, like, damn, bro, is this motherfucker still on gangster shit? Hey, he goes to church now. He's married. He has kids. His life has totally changed. He went in there and whatever, whoever was able to get at him or get a hold of him or talk to him, changed him. These youth counselors. So it does work for some people. But it's just a trip how sometimes these domestic violence things can leak off into your children and influence your kids. I mean, he was already a bad seed. He was already in the streets going that route. Um, but it's the truth. That shit happened. You know, and, and the mom ended up catching all day. She's in Valley State Prison for women. It's a wrap. She's been there for a minute, minute. And it's, I say it twice because it's a minute, minute. You know what I mean? I'm going to go get the papers, get the papers. She's going to go get a minute, get a minute, right? Plus some. Just is what it is, man. Um, but it doesn't matter what you do or what you've done in your past, the crimes that you've committed, you can change. And this is a story I wanted to tell you about change. You know, he was on some crazy shit. He had no, there was no one there to help him. I tried, man, but I guess I just didn't do enough. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, and the struggle to strive. I tell these stories not to glorify the gangbanging and to glorify the bullshit. But to tell you how easy it is in the neighborhood and the vaudevilles for someone to be forgotten about and, and for different situations to affect them. You know, his mom was going through some shit. His brother went through some shit. So he decided to go through some shit and didn't have no one to turn to. His mom was just fucking crimey. It's a trip, huh? Anyways, I hope you guys take care, man. Super North Daniel rocking on Collective Clips. Make sure you go over there and tap in today. And a Super Wood. Double up. I got you. The gun. Bang, bang.